You're watching Light for the Way, a television program and also an internet program on Gospel Broadcasting Network. My name is Charles Cochran with the East Ridge Church of Christ, and it's always a special joy and an honor to be before you and let the Bible be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our pathway. Remember the words of the psalmist when he would say, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my pathway. Therefore, we have our program identified as Light for the Way. And as you and I walk on the way that leads throughout this life all the way towards eternity, we need light. We need direction. We need guidance. And God has given us His precious and His holy word as a guide, as a light, as a lamp that will direct us and will guide us through the darkness that is all around us. There is a need to understand the importance of preparation. Now we know that we prepare for many things in life. Maybe some of us remember how that when we decided to get married, that we spent days and weeks and probably even months in preparing for that very special day, that wedding day, that day of all days when we look back and we recall how that we were joined in holy wedlock to that man or that woman who we chose to be our lifetime partner. And all of the things that were done in preparation for that day were things that were very important to us. Also, there are other times of preparation. There are young people that will go through high school and college preparing for their life's work. And it's important to study, to prepare ourselves as we face the challenges of life. Well, I want to talk to you about preparation of another great day. And the preparation that we want to think about in the next uh, few lessons as we share together We'll not be able to talk about all of them today, but we want to discuss these in the next few studies uh, that we have with you on this program, and that is preparation for the day of Pentecost. We know that in the book of Acts, the second chapter, there was the great day of Pentecost that came, and the church of Christ was established on that great day. All of the Old Testament was pointing towards the coming of the day of Pentecost. All of the New Testament, after the church was established, it points back to that day of Pentecost. And so there is a focal point. There is an important day, a special day, when the church of the Lord was established in the year A.D. 33 in the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible describes the wonder and the joy and the excitement that must have filled all the city of Jerusalem. When on that day, the day of Pentecost, the church had its beginning. I want to encourage you to be sure now that you are a member of the church that you read about in the Bible. We can open our Bibles and we can read about the church of the New Testament. We can read about the one body of Christ that was established on this day, the day of Pentecost in A.D. 33, in the city of Jerusalem. For the Bible says in Acts 2 and verse 47, that the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Therefore, we talk today about the importance of preparing for the coming of this great day. How did Jesus prepare his disciples for the coming of this day? Well, we have by the inspired writing of Luke in chapter 1 of the book of Acts, some things that are revealed to us that help us understand how that Jesus prepared his disciples for the coming of the day of Pentecost. Would you listen to Acts chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, reading down through verse number 3. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, 
to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining unto the kingdom of God. I would suggest the first thing that Jesus is doing here in preparing his disciples for the coming of the day of Pentecost is to share with them the proof of his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus is a bedrock of our faith. If you take away the reality of the resurrection of Jesus, you take away the heart of the gospel of Christ. For if Jesus is not risen, if he is not raised up from the dead, then Jesus is not the Son of God. And if Jesus is not the Son of God, he is declared to be an imposter. He is declared to be a deceiver. You and I cannot believe in him. We cannot commit our lives unto him. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 that Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. How do I know? that Jesus is God's Son. Because the Bible says Jesus was raised from the dead. He was resurrected in that great 15th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. We identify that as the resurrection chapter. And the Apostle Paul will discuss the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He connects the resurrection with Christ with our faith. He connects the resurrection of Jesus Christ with our preaching. He connects the resurrection of Jesus Christ with our sins. He connects the resurrection of Jesus Christ with our hope beyond the grave. Paul will say there in that great chapter, if Jesus Christ is not risen, then our preaching is in vain. The literal word that Paul will use there, our preaching is empty. Our preaching has no content. If the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not true, the Bible also says our faith is in vain. Our faith is empty. In what then shall we place our faith if the one who was crucified and buried in Joseph's new tomb is still in the grave? But if Jesus Christ is not in the grave, if he has been resurrected from the grave, then our faith is no longer empty. Our faith has something of the reality about it that helps us to know and to believe and to have the assurance that that resurrection gives our faith something in which we can hold on to. Also, if Jesus Christ is not raised from the dead, then we're still in our sins. Because it is in the resurrection of Jesus as a part of the gospel that brings about forgiveness of sins. If Jesus just simply died shedding his blood, that would not be enough. If Jesus had been buried and he did not come out of the grave, the burial of Jesus is not enough. The third part of the gospel of Christ is that Jesus was resurrected. It is his death, his burial, and his resurrection. All three of these are the wonderful truths of the gospel of Christ. And if the resurrection of Jesus Christ did not occur, then we are assured today, we know for sure that Jesus and the gospel that is associated with his death, burial, and resurrection, that the salvation from our sins that is brought about as a result of the preaching and the believing of that gospel that cannot then be taken into the heart of one who is lost in sin, and he cannot find salvation apart from the gospel of Christ. That's why Paul says, if Jesus is not raised, you're still in your sins because the resurrection is associated with salvation from our sins. If the resurrection did not occur, then those who have died in the Lord, they are most pitiable. They have died without hope. If Jesus is not raised, then you and I will not be raised. 
The resurrection of Jesus is associated with our resurrection. And we will be in the grave forever. We will not be raised out of the grave if Jesus Christ is not resurrected from the grave. So you see the importance of our believing in the resurrection of Jesus? And did the apostles have proof? Did they know that Jesus was raised? Well, in the book of Acts chapter 1, the writer Luke tells us that three things were evidence or proof that Jesus manifested to the apostles, demonstrating to them his resurrection. First, he appeared to them. They saw him, and they, with their physical eyes, they saw that Jesus was indeed raised. He appeared in their midst. And as they looked upon the body of Christ, in fact, Thomas was able to reach out his hand, put it in the hand of Jesus, reach out his hand and put it in the side of Jesus. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Thomas saw the body of Jesus as it had been raised. They would sit by the Sea of Galilee. And these disciples and Jesus would eat together. A breakfast was shared by Jesus and these apostles. So they saw him. Not only did they see him, but the Bible says there was time proof. The time that Jesus was on the earth between his resurrection and his ascension up into heaven was 40 days. 40 days. Jesus appeared to these men. And those days were such that it was not just one day or just one hour, but there were many appearances of Jesus to so many of his disciples, not only his 12 or the 11, but also other disciples. Over 500 brethren at one time saw him. And so we have the time proof that Jesus has been raised again 40 days. He walked upon the earth after he is resurrected. And also we have the audible proof. For the Bible says that Jesus spoke concerning the things of the kingdom of God. And as Jesus spoke, these apostles heard what he was saying to them. So we have the evidence and the proof of Jesus' resurrection because the apostles saw him. You have the time proof, 40 days that he walked upon the earth. You also have the audible proof because he spoke to them and they heard what he was saying unto them. You see, our faith is not a blind thing today. Our faith is real. The Bible says, prove all things, hold fast to what is good. And the law of rationality says we ought to justify all of our conclusions by adequate evidence. We have the adequate evidence of the many infallible proofs of the resurrection of Jesus. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ then instilled faith in the hearts of those apostles. And as they remembered and they saw and they knew their Lord had been raised from the dead, they went out with great joy, sharing that wonderful message of the gospel that involved the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Praise the Lord.